Welcome back to another episode of the Linguistic Isle podcast. And for today's episode, we're going to be talking to Ezra Richardson, who a lot of people in our community know as the life of the party, but I know her as thoughtful, deep, insightful, and someone who is truly talented with words. Don't get me twisted. She's the life of the party too. But she is very popular. She is my best friend who I've known since I was 12, which is a very interesting time period to meet someone because that's really when you're coming into your own and learning a lot about yourself. So everyone has a language story. Let's get ready to hear hers. I was a rose sweetie planted in your garden, watered and nurtured and fed with such love. Placed in a portion that filled with sunlight, grace soaking my petals with coolness at night. I would sleep in anticipation of the very next day, but I would yet again get to hear you say, My beautiful black rose, you shine like no other. Blush as you gently touch me and stroke my stem so tender. morning hello everyone welcome to the linguistic isle podcast today's episode we're going to be speaking with the awesome amazing someone that i know very well and you guys probably do too it's miss ezra richardson so ezra i'll let you introduce yourself okay i, I like your introduction pretty much but uh uh hi Guys, it's Ezra. I have a lot of ways to introduce myself. I'm in a lot of different activities, but uh, for the most part, it's just me, a part-time mermaid that <laughs> enjoys living where most people vacation. Um, I born and raised in St. Martin, and I have been here on this earth for, uh, actually, I won't tell you how many years. <laughs> Don't worry about that. And um, yeah, I'm in marketing, real estate, I like to do poetry. I uh, have a lot of things that I do. And I'm a foodie. And a foodie. Almost everybody that knows that. Yeah. Knows so that. most people know <laughs> that you're a foodie. But for the, today's episode, you're going to be a wordy. A wordy. We're going to talk okay. about your experience as a wordy. Okay. So we're going to start with section one, a word with a wordy. Okay. And my first question for you is, what's your mother tongue? How would you describe your mother tongue? My mother tongue, honestly, I would say is English, although it comes across as broken English for those that uh, speak the Queen's tongue, <laughs> rather. but although my passport is Dutch, we learn Dutch in school, but at home, you know, we speak with our accent yeah. from where we're born here in St. Martin. So yeah, English is my mother tongue. Okay. So would you say English or would you say smart in English? Say smart in English all the way. All the okay. way. So how many languages do you speak? Um, English and Dutch fluently. I can speak uh, some French, some Spanish, enough to get around. And I've been trying to learn other languages, but you know, that's not going very well so far because I always get preoccupied with something else. But I wanted to learn Italian. I wanted to learn Mandarin. Ooh. And Mandarin, they say, if you know how to speak Mandarin, then you pretty much can learn any other language. Yeah, I could. But I could see that. For that reason, it's really tough to learn. So. Right. But English and Dutch, straight up. French, I can get around. Spanish, I can get around. Awesome. Okay, so we've been talking about this idea of code switching. So for those of us who speak either a different language or dialect, sometimes you switch the way you speak when you get around um, certain dialect groups. Do you do code switching? And can you give examples of when you find that's necessary to do? Uh, code switching, yes, <laughs> all the time. Um, actually, I think I, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Although, you know, you have my, my accent is still there, I'm still trying to articulate and use the words properly so that it's easily understandable. Yeah. Um, if anybody were to call me at work, <laughs> when I answer the phone, you'd be surprised to see me in person afterwards, be like, okay, that's not how you sound on the phone. <laughs> and um, 
if somebody gets out of line, then the code switching is in the other direction. Yeah. We have to pull their socks up. Yes. So <laughs> I, I think I found that to be the most true that especially when you're in your deepest of emotions, mm -hmm. like anger, mm -hmm. then yes, all the reservations come off is like yeah, yeah. It's a wrap. that's it. So do you have any examples of times where maybe you didn't code switch and there was a miscommunication? Um, miscommunication, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of times that that's happened. I have like funny instances that yeah, actually happened I want funny last instances. night was a recent time that it happened because I met a lot of, um, I meet a lot of tourists because I'm in real estate and mm -hmm. kind of in the tourism industry. and. I don't know, sometimes I seem approachable, sometimes not. <laughs> but uh, we were actually out with a couple of tourists that actually are leaving today. And we invited them to a barbecue by one of our friend's house for a local experience. Oh, nice. And the whole time we were talking, at one point in time, I even forget what we were talking about. And we were speaking, oh, we were speaking to each other about when GB goes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so one of my <laughs> friends was like, there's a song that said GB gone, and you know? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. he talking, I was like, yeah, and we're cackling. And one of the white ladies, she was like, why can't I understand you guys? <laughs> and she was just like, okay, what just like, happened? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> so now we're trying to, oh, wait, what did we say that you didn't understand? Because it was so like natural, we didn't even realize, but we were talking amongst each other. Yeah, And yeah. she was trying to follow. Yeah. And for the life of her, she had to just hold up. Hold up, wait. Uh, Pump the I brakes. Lost me. What I, is I happening? Lost me. <laughs> that is perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Great. Um, so now tell me, what is your favorite quote or song lyric? At the um, favorite quote? Because I'm into poetry, I always pretty much put it. If it's, it's too long for me to put on my body, otherwise I would have tattooed it. But my favorite quote is, she lives the poetry. Wait, how is it? She lives the poetry. I I know this one, I wait, wait, wait finish no, it, I'm I have, like, I have it right here. I know, I know, I have it right here. She lives the poetry that she cannot write. The others write the poetry that they dare not realize. Yes. That's my favorite quote. Awesome. <laughs> Ooh, from a poet. <laughs> and now give us one word that describes Ezra. Um, excitable, I guess, uh, or exciting. Depends on how you approach it. I don't know. Most people, they would describe me. It depends on the mood. It depends on the, the location. It depends on what we're doing. I'm not a morning person, but if and you I catch have me after a certain hour, <laughs> <laughs> then I'm a party starter too. So it kind of depends on the element. But I think um, I would like to say, you know what? I'm going to go with authentic, authentic because what you see yeah. is what you get. Facts. <laughs> okay, guys. So that ends part one. We'll be back with round two. And it's so interesting and nice to have you on camera so that like people can see us together and we could talk about what it was like <laughs> for us growing up so since we were kids but i'll get to that part after can you tell me what language was like for you in your household growing up because you mentioned in the beginning like you know dutch was in school the semak and english was at home mm -hmm. what was that like what were like the different dialects or expressions something you remember from your household growing up different expressions um you know more so from growing up you just know if you're in trouble <laughs> they call you by your full government oh, Ezra, <laughs> i ain't gonna tell you my middle name right now because only people close to me know that but it's Ezra richardson mm. <laughs> like bring your tail along here <laughs> like, okay i'm bringing the tail <laughs> But when you say things like that to other people that haven't grown up with, you know, Simat and English as their dialect, they'll be like, bring it, what? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Hurry up, go come back. It's like, Wait, what, do what, what? I'm sorry, what are you talking about? <laughs> but those things are so normal. If you say it to somebody else from Simatin, it's just going to be like, okay, okay, I'll come in just now. Yeah. Like, okay, are you coming in five minutes, 10 minutes, right around the corner, right. by the stoplight? That's one, I'll by the stoplight lies. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Big, biggest lies ever. <laughs> uh, by us, is always, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, by Harold Jack, come in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's really probably, I care. think that's why we don't have stoplights anymore. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. To, to curb the lion. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk more about this Dutch education that you had growing up. Um, so tell us, where did you go to school in St. Martin? Um, elementary school was Sister Borgia Elementary School, or Ponsel, before I actually started going there. And then I went to high school at Milton Peters College. And both of them have like the Dutch influence as far as the schools on island go. Okay. And then you went to university in... The University of South Florida in Tampa. 
Yeah. Okay. Tampa, Florida. So now when you made that switch and you went to university, how did having a Dutch education enhance your study experience? Like what were some pros and cons or interesting experiences you had making that switch? Well, you know, I started college when I was 16. So uh, I was still relatively young. I was always like the younger person in my classes, but then getting to the US, they were like, who is this little girl? <laughs> Where did she come from? I haven't grown much since then, so but it's okay. Um, the funny thing about it is the Dutch level of education, it seems to be on a higher level when you leave the country. Like you don't realize that when you get there, it's like, okay, but I did this already. Hmm. But the one thing that was interesting to me and the, well, actually kind of difficult also was the transition from Dutch to English because most of my educational um, experience had been in Dutch. Hmm. And uh, my freshman year when I got to USF and they wanted me to do calculus, and all of the terms in calculus, I was like, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna need a dictionary <laughs> to translate from Dutch to English, cause or English to Dutch. So I used to actually walk around with a big dictionary oh, wow. in my backpack, just to try and understand. Cause I'm like, I know this stuff, but the language barrier was throwing me off in the beginning. Yeah. So uh, I remember my first class I went to, it was like, okay, they were like, oh, this, um, I'm like, what's a circumference? <laughs> and people were like, what? This, a circumference like the circumference i was like okay however you say it, what is it i was like you know what let me check in the dictionary and it's upper block in dutch so i was like oh okay i know how to do this problem now yeah but yeah, you know yeah. it had that little bit of and that's another switch that you have to do besides code switching mm -hmm. it's like to be able to understand what they're trying to tell you because you have to translate it from English to Dutch and then Dutch to English right, right. just so that you're on the same page so, yeah yeah it was a little difficult in the beginning I, I even got a tutor to help me try and understand you know the differences in the words similarities in the words and then after that then I was pretty okay so That's awesome. <laughs> and how did you find like so when you met people up there and um, I'm sure you met like international students or other American mm -hmm. students what was their reaction like when they found out that oh you speak Dutch or you're from a Dutch well, Caribbean. you know, most of them that they, and it's interesting because there's a lot of people when they see you from an island, there's this misconception that, you know, you probably still live in huts. I don't think they have that anymore. But they're very surprised when they find out you're bilingual because apparently that's something that's weird to them. Oh, wow. And um, mostly they realize that I... Well, most of the instances that people realize I can speak a second language is when someone else from Holland showed up oh. and um, they would start talking like, oh, you're from St. Martin? I'm like, yeah. And then now we have our little, when we're talking about that person over there. Oh, really? <laughs> so, and I also would be around people and then like, if I call my mom, I will call my mom and I'm speaking to her in Dutch. And she's responding to me in Dutch and she's like, why am I responding to you in Dutch? I'm at home. <laughs> I don't have to hide what I'm saying from anybody. <laughs> so I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, man. Happy Nico Gord. And yes, that's basically how a lot of people, and then they would turn around and look at me like, what are you talking? <laughs> I was like, that's another language, yeah. That's but awesome. don't worry about it. <laughs> so did you find it to be um, uh, like a boost, like something that was like an extra, something unique in your pocket? Or? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I think that um, being from an island, and the Caribbean diaspora, you already have like an extra seasoning in yeah, the food. You yeah. know, there's an extra flair already that people don't understand whether it's just because of your accent or not even from the Caribbean diaspora, even if you're from Italy or France. Just where you have an accent, especially in the US, people try to pinpoint where you're from and it makes you that much more interesting. That's right. And, um, you know, being bilingual is, no matter what language it is, is always a, a benefit because you know um you can go to other places speak and job interviews when they ask you how many languages you speak it's always great to be able to rattle off like this one speak eight languages i'm trying to get to there but i don't know <laughs> if in my lifetime it's gonna happen i know it's like oh gosh time to, time to start working on it no right? no 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 <laughs> okay so now we're gonna go to the part that um she don't like so much we're gonna take it way back mm. so i know ezra from young rapping chanting, singing. So I want you to tell the audience more about where did this affinity for words and lyrics come from and 
How did it develop? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's no. not an acceptable <laughs> answer. No, yeah. like honestly, I mean, I don't know. I think like I've always been um, musically inclined. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I think that my parents did a good job in trying to foster that in me. So we met in the choir. So mm -hmm. they would put me in the choir. I went to voice lessons and um, piano lessons. Piano lessons did not last long. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they, they, you get cultured in a sense because you know, you're being placed in extracurricular activities. And that's why it's so important to have your kids in activities where mm -hmm. they can grow different skills. Yeah. And um, in school, English has always been my favorite language just because it's a pretty difficult like language if you see like why is there an O and this one is pronounced this way mm -hmm. and this word is pronounced that way so it's it that became where i like the play on words and the play on like how to say certain things um reading poetry and the book reading part of school i used to enjoy that as well the book report writing so i've always kind of had that i don't know where i developed it but i've always kind of had that affinity for words like you said and um I think after meeting like-minded people, like remember the summers where we would be like, okay, our challenge to each other, we're gonna oh, write yeah. a poem. Yeah, yeah you want them to know all of my that. business, yeah. you gonna know hers too. I was gonna talk about <laughs> We would write poetry. <laughs> yeah, so we like funny. every day we write a poem. Oh my god. And then we I call each that. other the afternoon and recite to each other. Oh my god. And then we kind of critique each other. So that yeah. actually, that actually helped us help each other like grow in that skill writing. Yeah. Um, um, but you know, since we thought we're starting to get into more about poetry, poetry calls for a lot of use of figurative language. And like you were saying, you like this play on words. Mm -hmm. um, are you able to appreciate those, that type of language in both English and Dutch? Do you find? And did you have to ever write poetry in Dutch? And was this experience different? I think I've tried to write poetry in Dutch once or twice. Like when I was in school, I would have tried to do that for like, you know, when you're doing certain projects and you want to, you decide to do poetry mm -hmm. instead of anything else. So I would try to do it. The only thing about it is that's difficult is because, okay, although it's Simat in English, English is still like my first language. Um, Dutch, I have a thing where it's more literal, um, what's the word? Literal translation. Mm -hmm. And you know, someone whose mother tongue is Dutch they would be like, okay, but that's not how we would really say it, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't have as much flexibility in playing with the words yeah. that I it would be like, mean. ooh, that was a hot pun. Yeah, okay, yeah, I like exactly. that. I could do that mm -hmm. in English easy, but yeah. Dutch is probably a little bit more tricky. But um, yeah, I, I want to work on that as well. Like at our poetry night, when we uh, moved to the French side, and I heard like our French side enthusiasts saying poetry in French is so sexy and I'm like I don't know what you're saying but I know how to say we oui. yes we oui, honey we oui. <laughs> awesome well I was thinking I was thinking about okay wait first I want to say but if you heard a poem in Dutch do you think you would pick up on those expressions like maybe oh. you mightn't be able to come up with that but when you hear it it's like oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. for the okay. most part yeah I would be able to listen and be like okay wait hold on hold on say that again say that again okay I like I see what you did there yeah I see what you did I there. remember one time like you came over by me and um it wasn't poetry but you remember we were watching what's that um comedian name the one that dresses up oh all I remember is just something like Umbus yeah, 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 or something yeah, yeah, yeah. like that and so she's watching it and we can watch it and we're like, oh, this is funny. So certain things we're just picking up on, but not all the words. But then like you sat there and you like translate yeah, yeah, it. Oh my God, they just said this. Yeah. Oh my God, they just said yeah. this. And it made um, so much sense and it was nice. But for me, it was so interesting watching this like Antillian comedy mm -hmm. in Dutch and mm -hmm. you know, and the, ex the, the mannerisms. I'm like, that must be so interesting from that perspective, like Dutch. In that, yeah, because you know, like that, that particular um, comedian is like, she already makes you laugh looking at what you know she's doing and yeah. how she's doing her extraness or whatever i can't remember her name but, what's her um, name i can't remember her name either i, I can see her face yeah, yeah i can't remember her name either and then to translate it is then becomes a hundred times more funny you'll be like wait oh that's what she said oh my god and then you know so you're like cackling with your belly out so and that's the, the beautiful part about language being able to being able to laugh in multiple languages mm -hmm. okay so we're gonna pause here we're coming back for part three I hope you guys enjoyed the chat with Ezra and myself. 
For today's word bank, we're going to do it a little bit differently, and I'm going to be giving you some words in Dutch. I think um, it was an interesting part of the interview when Ezra was describing how um, the challenges she had in school, not because she didn't understand what needed to be done, but she just needed the vocabulary word. And you know what? To be fair, that happens can happen in English too. Because I can remember teaching third grade, and we teach perimeter and area about the same time. And even with only dealing with English words, sometimes the kids mix up which is which. And we kind of did that today too. So the Dutch word actually for perimeter is omtrek. Omtrek is the word for perimeter, while the oppervlakte is the word for area. So please forgive us for that. Also, we couldn't remember for the life of us the name of the lovely Miss Judeska. <laughs> it's a funny sketch comedy. I think the show is called The Dino Show. And uh, her name is Judeska. She is hilarious. This is a clip, a picture from the episode we had watched together. And um, I learned that word, ombuskoft. Oh, I'm saying it terribly. Let me look at the spelling to help me. Ombuskoft. And it means rude. And she used it quite a few times in the episode. So I was able to pick up on the meaning and then look it up. So these are your word bank words for today. A little sprinkle of Dutch for you. We just started to get into talking more about poetry as Ezra is one of the founders of the Poets Lounge. In part two, we're going to keep talking about poetry, the role in education, and also in cultural preservation on our island. So join us next time on part two of this episode of Linguistic Isle. Ciao!